American Black Journal will bring you stories throughout the year on the findings of the Detroit Journalism Cooperative. Meanwhile, the Detroit Historical Society is also launching a project next year that looks back at 1967 Detroit. It's going to include a collection of written audio and video histories reflecting on that summer of civil unrest. And joining me now is the director of the Historical Society's Detroit 1967 project, Marlo Stoudemire. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you for having me, Stephen. Yeah. It's great to be here. No, it's great to see you. Um, so one of the one of the, the the sort of questions that gets raised uh, in the video we just saw is how different are the conditions that uh, exist now in Detroit from the conditions that led to the 1967 uprising? And I, I feel like there's a question we ask sort of off and on a lot around here. Obviously, it'll get more focused next year with the with the anniversary. But uh, but talk a little about what you see as similarities and differences. Well, first of all, I think that that's a great point. Uh, it's all about perspective. Um, it depends on who you ask um, and, and where people are in their Detroit experience. Yeah. Um, so some people will look at the momentum that we're experiencing in downtown and midtown and say, wow, things have really progressed. We're done. We fixed it. <laughs> and to a degree, that is a success. Yeah. Then others will point to conditions that not only exist in Detroit but parallel some of the things that are happening across America and it depends on where you are it could be from a cultural perspective it could be generational it could be geographical I would say that there's some uh, some advancements that we've made in areas of uh, things like race relations yeah. depending on what generation you're looking at but then there's some things where we probably still have to do some work our job at the Detroit Historical Society is to really tell the stories and bring a face to them and make sure that people understand why they matter and so we're speaking to different audiences. If you ask me as a native Detroiter and someone who lives uh, still in the city, yeah. um, I would say we still have some work to do. Yeah. I would say that there are four key areas right now that we need to focus on, and that's economic inclusion and opportunity, race relations, youth engagement and develop, uh, development of their leadership, and advancement of neighborhoods, which all, to, depending on where you're looking at it from, are little a little lagging behind. Yeah, no, those are the, those are our those are our areas of, depending on how you look at it, opportunity or challenge. Right. Um, you know, ten years ago when uh, we when we talked about the 40th anniversary of the riots, I remember a conversation I had with uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, who mm -hmm. was the mayor at that time. He and I are the same age, grew up in the same uh, the same time here in the city, uh, and we were talking about the riots in the in the context of our kids. Um, and what the riots meant to them. Uh, both he and I grew up or born right after the riots happened and can remember it framing a lot of our childhood. But he said um, he, said he, he felt like uh, the riots weren't part of his kids' Detroit. They didn't frame the Detroit that they knew. And I thought that, I always thought that was a really interesting way to see it, that, that uh, for kids now, what does it mean? Now, we could argue about whether it frames people's reality or not. It does frame a lot of people's reality, but there's, there still is that idea of distance, right, uh, from, in time from something so horrific uh, that eventually maybe we do get to a place where it's not the defining characteristic or moment for people here in Detroit. Yeah, I, I think that first and foremost, I have a lot of respect for Kwame as an individual, regardless of the choices that he made yeah, and where right. he is now. I would say that, you know, part of what he's saying is, is true, but I also disagree to a certain extent. It all depends on the environment that you're growing up in and yeah. the people who make it relevant to you. Yeah. Uh, for example, me growing up, my mother and people in my family always shared the stories, always connected me you to it. You heard about right? it all the time. You hear about it all the time, so it does feel relevant. But, you know, our generation, we're the generation after. We inherited a city that some feel was broken. Uh, whether it be disinvestment, whether it be lack of opportunity, you name it, we're the generation who inherited that, right? And so now what you're seeing is the seeds that were basically sowed years ago in the 80s and the 70s that are now coming up and blossoming into whether it be some beautiful and some weeds, right? So with that being said, I would say that the generation that's coming up now needs that perspective, yeah. but it needs to be translated in a way that they can consume it, right? It can't be your traditional approach where you're gonna say, oh, back in our day, this is how we had it, you should feel lucky. You know, I even uh, read something the other day where a young man posted on social media uh, that said, you know, 
uh, Stephen A. Smith mm -hmm. said, oh, these kids don't know anything about racism. Racism doesn't exist for them. Right. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> it comes in different forms and approaches it and, 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 and has different manifestations of how it's presented, right? And I think that the key is, and this is why we're doing this project, past, present, and future generations, we have common threads. Yeah. It's the shared history. It's that collective history. So explaining why it matters, even for new Detroiters yeah. or yeah. people who decided to stay, it's about how we present it so they understand why it matters. Well, and and being able to connect them, right? right? Being able to connect the experience of somebody who says, this doesn't really mean anything to me, to someone who can sort of say, well, this means a lot to me, and right. it, it really does still define the world that I, that I live in. And I think uh, if you go into a lot of neighborhoods in Detroit, there's no way to see it other than that, the riots or the uprising or whatever you want to call it, uh, really change the fortunes of, uh, of, of that neighborhood. So the point that you're making here is really one of the key points of our value proposition at the Detroit Historical Society. So a lot of people believe that those five days changed everything. Yeah. And we're saying, no, that's not true. <laughs> it was going. Right? So we're going back 50 years, even prior to 67, yeah. to show how there was a groundswell that led up to those five days in terms of con conditions, right? Then telling the story about what happened during those five days and offering people to have perspectives that are going to differ. Yeah. That doesn't mean that there aren't multiple truths. There's no one source of truth. And then what happened after, and then more than anything, what are we going to do to move forward well, to 2067? Why? Well, and know, why? I, mean, I think the question is always why. why? Uh, your, your point that lots of people point to the riot or the uprising as the reason. Right. Uh, it, it's a symptom of something that was going on for a really long time in terms right. of the disinvestment in the city, uh, the, the abandonment of the, of the city. Uh, talk about uh, when people uh, will start to engage. Uh, I, I know you guys are doing lots of uh, interviews and, and things. When will we kick off this, this event in a way that people are starting to really st uh, see the the, the, the events and the opportunities for them to, to get involved. Right, so, so the project is a multi-year community engagement project. It features diverse voices, programs, and exhibitions that really helps us understand our collective history, you know, where we are now, how we got there, yeah. and then where we're going, right? With that being said, we're convening over 100 community partners, organizations, and individuals to help us really get the word out, number one, but also engage in conversations around those critical imperatives around discussions around race, yeah. making it a regional story, talking about the conditions, talking about the symptoms, and really kind of trying to bring everybody together. What we're saying is we're creating a model, and what the model literally is is bringing a diverse community together around the effects of a historic crisis in order for people to find their role in the present right. to inspire the future. So what we do today matters more than anything. We can learn from the past, we can look ahead to the future, but the utility of that and the relevance of these tools, right, and how it parallels with what's going on in the rest of America and the world is important. So what you'll start to see is probably after we make our public announcement to the business <coughs> community in Mackinac this uh -huh. June, mm -hmm. is we'll unveil it to the business community and then we'll open it up in the summer doing a one-year countdown with programming, engagement, full marketing plans. By the time we get to 2017, yeah. when the exhibition opens and the actual anniversary kicks in, we're talking about renewal and moving forward. So we're not going to glaze over the heart facts, yeah. but at the same time, this is all about moving Detroit forward. So I'm, I'm curious uh, what, what kind of uh, potential pushback you're getting. Uh, wh uh, what, do you, what do you say to people who say, eh, this was 50 years ago, I don't want to keep talking about this. I think, we should, I think we should move on. That's something that I hear a lot when you talk about race, when you talk about economics, when you talk about history. What's your answer uh, to those people? I would say uh, pay attention. Uh, pay attention to Flint. Yeah. Pay attention to Baltimore. Pay attention to Ferguson. Pay attention to the election, right? If we're going to move ahead as a region, it's not going to be separated. It's not going to be through finger pointing, but we have to understand the parallels of 67, a post-bankruptcy Detroit, and having a vision for where we're going in 2067. Those youth that you talked about who can't connect to it, we need to help them connect to it because guess what? It won't be us leading us to 2067, it'll be them, right? And so it has to matter. It matters to everyone. What we're not gonna do is we're not gonna put you in a box and tell you how it should matter to you. We're gonna prevent, present the information, right? That's number one, and we're gonna bring people together. I would say that if you're pushing back, that's actually a good thing because we want diversity of experiences, expressions, and, and opinion, thought, right? Sure. And opinions, right? But the objective is, is to make you pay attention. 
and keep our eyes on the prize. And you're right, nobody wants to stay stuck in 67. The name of the project is looking back to move forward, but you can't move forward, right? So if we don't understand our past, we're probably in the dark regarding our history and our future. Yeah. All right, Marlo Stolermeyer, thank you very much for being here. On thank you. American Black Journal. Appreciate it.